Robert Social, we are back with Vivi from the Not Perfect Just Broke podcast. Hello. Vivi, what's going on? What's going on? Your podcast is for the struggling millennial, correct? Yes. What does the millennial struggle with the most? Being independent, holding a job, dating, coronavirus? Well, what is it? <laughs> it is all of that and in between. But basically the general gist of my show is basically just making the struggle of the millennial generation humorous. Ah. Mm. Isn't that just life in general? Everybody's struggle is funny. Everything's funny. Even if it's happening to somebody you care about, it could be joked about in different in a different uh, forum. Well, I definitely agree. It can be seen as um, different generations, but I feel like with the millennial generation, we're dealing with a lot of different things, such as career issues, how everyone is going through this midlife crisis on um, 25 years old, <laughs> where they feel like they don't belong in their profession. Now they're trying to be independent, but they realize like there's no pension. Okay. And then it's like, we can't even afford to live. Who fucked up then? Was it was it the boomers? I, I blame it on the boomers. I'm Gen X. Fuck the boomers. Blame the banks. Oh my god, you're 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 such a grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> grandpa. <laughs> not yet, not yet. I got I got kids. Not, no grandkids yet. What? A, <laughs> how long old do you have to be to be a millennial? Like where does That's that fall? Like because I think there used to be Generation Y, and then all of a sudden, like fucking thirty year olds are now millennials. Who fucks a millennial? I think it's the it's definitely the late 1980s to um, 1996. So Slam? Uh, see, I don't know, because me and Slam Bull were both born in 1988, and I feel like we, we, oh, we were very 87. different. 80, yeah, you were 87, yeah, I, I was 88. That's Generation Y. <laughs> That's the Y chromosome. Oh, that's what I think so, yeah, too. Generation Y considered the millennial? It's like the first. Is, are they, did like they the, start? You guys fucked it up. We're, for we all were of like us. the first wave, I think, weren't oh. we? Like... <laughs> so they, they, it's their fault, right, Vivi? Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I got it on Google, and it does say Generation Y is the millennials oh, from okay. the 1980s to the 1990s. Wow! Yeah, wow! So be me and Slam you guys are. You, so what about kids now? Like a kid born now is that a millennial? No, they're like Generation X or Generation Z. Z, Z yeah. Z. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, so they're, they're going to save us, right? They're going to fix... The, are they going to be like the Mad Max people? They're actually going to be worse than the millennials due to the fact that they've been spoiled by um, these current issues. Oh. Uh, like what? Like Corona? Virus? Spoiled no, by Corona. corona. <laughs> they've had Corona. They've drank Corona since they were toddlers <laughs> due to the fact that we were the last generation oh. where we transitioned towards like the computer and social media we're dealing with the recent generation that was born with all of this right i love so social media too i can't get, get off twitter i'm always on twitter that shit is good yeah that's why I don't I don't consider me and Slambo millennials because like we didn't really grow up with that stuff. Like Ooh. later in our high school year, we had like MySpace, but it was Ooh. like later. I didn't even ha I didn't have a laptop until I graduated high school. So oh, you, it, it was, you had the hard life. Like, you, you, yeah, we you we had yeah, we yeah. had like maybe if anything we had like AOL Instant Messenger. I, I, I can still remember in middle school when there was no <laughs> smartphones too. <laughs> Same thing. Remember when you used to like have a crush on someone? And then you would just like contact them on chat, or you would see if they were online. I used to sneak yeah. into the classroom when they were at recess and just, <laughs> <I'd> just <laughs> computers. Sho shove like birds. I, I'd find birds in a nest, and I would shove baby birds in, the, in their desk, and that would be how you, <laughs> you how you showed somebody you loved them. <laughs> that was in the eighties, Vivi. That's how you did it back then. Sorry. That was brutal. <laughs> Isn't it? I like it. <laughs> Before the internet, we used dead birds. To no, they were still babies. They were still alive when I, they were in the desk. Oh, okay. That's all oh, I'm saying. This is a baby bird. You don't, right. I don't know what happened to them afterwards, but... <laughs> in my grandpa voice. Back in the day. I shoved baby birds into the, my girlfriend's desk. That's how we met. That's how we had you guys. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> How what what your show though, Vivi? Uh, not perfect, just broke. Could you be perfect and broke, or not perfect and rich? You can't be perfect and broke. Nobody can be perfect. Oh yes, people can be perfect when they have money. Ah, that's all it takes. 
Oh, yes, definitely. So the not perfect just broke. It has a lot of meanings, but the one specific meaning that I give to people is basically a disclaimer because a lot of people, especially in America, they base credibility on how much you're worth. So if they see that you're a high-level, successful professional with a lot of money, anything you say is valid because they see that there's proof. Because I got the Benjamins. I got them dead presidents stacked up. I'll make it rain. (laughs) What do you guys do? Millennials, they don't have cash. They just use a chip. Uh, Yeah. Credit card. (laughs) I make it rain. I'm old school. (laughs) Yeah, I just make it rain plastic. Like one plastic. (laughs) One plastic, two plastic, three plastic. (laughs) <laughs> uh, you do have a great show though, Vivi. Slim mentioned he, he was checking you out. I, I love it. I love the uh, episode, especially with Akeem from Ron on Cut Podcast. Uh, Testing oh, the Male Ego. That was a great episode. Thank you so much. It was actually my top episode. Cool, cool. For this yeah. You guys hit on a lot of stuff. I want to ask too, what is a, a simp? Because Akeem's uh, like beta cuck definition was just what I would think of. So I'm going to tell you what simp. So simp is basically like, from his um, perspective, it's considered a sum, a submission, submissive man. So basically someone that takes like all the crap from women, basically the man that's not considered alpha. Okay. A beta I'll give you the abbreviation for it. Okay. So, okay. Can I curse here or do I have to Fuck yeah. censor it? Let him fly. Okay, so someone sucka idolizing mediocre pussy. So I like a that. beta cock. So maybe Slim, <laughs> Slim likes it. He's into it, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so this isn't a guy who all the bitches want, right? I think in my opinion, because I want to deal with the simp, because I feel like alpha males, it's like, they actually have fragile masculinity, in my opinion. <laughs> Do you, uh, you, you want, you want my number? <laughs> she called it, Aww. Chris. Slim. <laughs> Are you guys dating now? <laughs> <laughs> we got a love connection. I love it. <laughs> so, like simps. So, there's guys that there are there girls that just go for simps. I think you said are there girls for simps or are there like, girl simps? Are, is that like a thing? Like the girls, the girls specifically seek that type of man out. Like hashtag uh, need a simp. They call them sugar daddies. <laughs> they call them sugar daddies. Sugar daddies is definitely ca- classified as a sense. Ah, uh, yeah, that's that's a weak, that's a weak man, right? Right, John Wilkes Booth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have John we have Wilkes a Booth very famous studio. historical figure, <laughs> John Wilkes Booth. <laughs> uh, Vivi, what's in your favorite? Like, you said the Akeem episode was like your uh, top episode. What has been your favorite so far? Oh, I can say my favorite episode was the second one, which is like, why are millennials quitting their job? Because it was basically inspired um, by what I'm currently going through with my mm. opportunity. What is it? Uh, like, just not uh, happy with the current job or just always looking for something better or just don't give a Both. fuck? I'm not content with my job because I'm dealing with bureaucracy and I'm also dealing with like a toxic environment. I and, thrive in tox- um, also toxic. Also, I'm not right? like satisfied. I feel like yeah. I'm destined for better, but I feel like I need to exercise my skills within a position, and I feel like I'm being limited right now. No, I want to. I want to dumb myself down. I want to. I want to thrive in that toxic fucking environment. <laughs> I want to. I want to stir some shit. I want to. I want to get some shit going. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to do any better. I don't want to do any better. That is true, because I actually want to do, like, a dumbed-down version of what I'm doing, but just basically in a positive environment. Like, let me not do overtime. Let me do an 8-to-2, a 9-to-5, and just be done with it. No yeah. overtime, no on-call. That's how it is, and then when I'm done, I don't think about that shit till I'm back the next day. Exactly. What do you do, if you don't mind me asking? Of course. Um, I handle the program development for the New York State government. Wow, that sounds pretty important. That sounds prestigious. AF. 
as the millennials say. It doesn't say. pay prestigious. No. Uh. <laughs> I don't know. It sounds stately. It sounds like you Right, yeah. You, know, you got a, you got a title. That's a fucking title. That ain't fucking pushing it's cards. A fucking title, and honestly, I would probably stay in this job just for the freaking title. But everything else, it's like it doesn't match the title. Do you get a badge? So is it just like like, like are you saying that the work is just like like you're almost saying you're overqualified yeah. for the work? Like or it's just overworked. Like, for, for, oh yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. It's just like <laughs> you're you're getting coffee for the boss all day. It's like. like I end up doing three positions within like <sighs> one hour. That's what I feel about every job, though. They want you to do like everybody else's thing. They want you to do like five yeah, jobs, that's true. And, and they want you to do more. That's yeah. why. You, that's why you don't overproduce because they're going to expect that. They're going to expect more. Mm-hmm. You just you just skate by. You do. Uh, you just skip by. I need to be an incompetent worker because it's like the incompetent employees in my job, it's like no one bothers them. But then due to the fact I'm competent, it's just like, oh, she's going to do it either way because that's how she is. Yep. And then can you get five other things done? That's exactly what it is. God damn. Exactly. Your next episode, Vivi, is uh, about podcasting, correct? Yes. Everyone has a podcast on March 8th. I was just going to ask when that comes out. And uh, what subjects do you hit on? Because uh, I know... uh, We've talked to S. Anthony Thomas a few times, and a couple times ago he told us that most podcasts don't make it outside of like 10 episodes, I think. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's interesting, because the last statistics that I saw before I started my podcast, it was actually seven episodes. Seven. Because the thing is, there are people that expect sponsorship within <clears throat> after the first yep. two episodes. We've seen that. We've seen people, yeah, want to want to be like Howard Sternrich after, you know, nine episodes. We've uh, also seen, uh, shit, what was I going to say? But yeah, no, they, they want that. Or um, I just feel too like uh, maybe they feel like they, they realize they don't have anything to say at that point. Yeah. Or, or see how hard it is, like how much work goes into it. Exactly. I think it's all of everything that you just said. Also with podcasting that people tend to undermine, you need to have the personality to podcast. There's no such thing as like, oh, I'm just going to be in the microphone and just rant about my day and then hopefully it'll be interesting. It's like you have to have some type of neurotic, some type of personality that's attractive to possible demographics. Yeah, nobody normal. Nobody normal is interesting. And uh, I <laughs> also feel like you have to feel like, yeah, like you, you that as a person and uh, oh, what was the other thing? I can't even think right now. But yeah, no, I, I totally agree. With, totally agree with that. I almost think it's it, podcasting has become kind of like the the new way to become a rich celebrity, that, right? Or Where to people, like to fit in, like, like oh, I got a podcast. Like, yeah, or that. Like, but I, I was thinking of it as like being a kid. You're always thinking like, oh, being a celebrity is how you get rich. You got to be in a movie. But like, and people think now like they see certain podcasts where they make you know thousands of dollars like there are some out there and they're like oh so i gotta do i'm gonna do that but like that person has worked for that, that it's taken them is years to get there person too yeah they or usually 20, an established person Twenty thousand followers or yep. they've, 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 they've sold out you know shows they they do things they do other things <laughs> yeah they're not just well, like I'm they turn the mic on and that's it i'm gonna kind of half disagree with you on that because when it pertains to podcasting social media following doesn't really match with your podcast following. You can have a lot of people that listen to you and then like not have a lot of people follow you because when people see my following on my Instagram and stuff, they expect like, okay, the people that are following her matches her listeners. It's like, no, it's actually thousands. Now the thing is when it pertains to podcasting, it is a competition, but I also feel like, it's an area where everyone can win. It right. actually reminds me of that YouTube increase when like there was a few people on YouTube and then the YouTube kind of like increased where people became millionaires off of viral videos. And then people started like being like, Oh, I want to be a YouTuber and stuff like that. Yeah. So what I think is, do I feel like there's any competition when it pertains to me? Nope. Because I feel like I can, definitely change the space around like i don't know if you um just saw the overview the last episode i had when i was speaking to someone who's basically a sex worker advocate and he's like in canada and we spoke about the ramifications the decriminalization of the sex worker um industry who did you speak to was it crumb um he's from toronto Mm, i don't know 
I, yeah, I know. Crasswell Crumb. Crumb, yeah. Crumb. I was just going to say, like, our buddy is up there, and we've talked to him uh, two or three times, I want to say. Yep. He's a great guy. Exactly. And he has his own thing in Pornhub, <laughs> being, like, one of the two only podcasts in um, Pornhub. So I think that oh. there's ways that people can win, but the number one secret is being consistent in interacting with your audience. You cannot just post something and just expect yeah. or, like, force mm. people to listen to you. I just, uh, I, I, I want to uh, just say too, like I've seen a lot of people just post in the uh, friends on Facebook posts like, oh, I, I got these angry emails. Like, shit, I want that angry email. Right. I'm, I'm looking for that. I'm looking to piss somebody <laughs> off and get that fucking reaction. And you're never going to forget me. And you're going to listen more. You're going to listen more mm-hmm. to see when I fuck up and when I'm going to offend you. Like, I want that. I was uh, in the early 2000s. I worked in radio and I was told, yeah. Bad publicity is free and good publicity. Like, that's good. I definitely agree. I actually have one episode coming out um, towards the end pertaining to single parenting and the millennial generation. And when I'm telling you I had, like, a few DMs of people saying, like, you need to show compassion. You need to behave yourself. You need to give disclaimers. And I'm just like, just watch the show and you'll find out. (laughs) (laughs) Shit. Shit. That's great. That's great. What, uh, what were you going to say something? I was just going to say what, what she just said reminded me of uh, one of the angry emails we, we got early on for a fake show that we used to do. Oh. And Rob had wrote this amazing like um, description, description of the show. Yeah. And he, he dropped the word uh, a retard in there. He the said R-word. retarded. Yeah. And somebody sent him this entire email of how it's wrong to call them retarded. Like how you should never use the R word. <laughs> But it was like a joke show. It wasn't even real. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, It didn't count. I don't know. People are very hypersensitive. And it's very interesting. That's another subject for another day. But I feel like also with this liberal and millennial generation, everyone's very sensitive to comedy. It can't be really funny. And just going to that with the the R word, it's like, uh, I remember years ago, I used to listen to Opie Anthony and... uh, yeah, they were trying to take the N-word away from, like, rappers and all, mm-hmm. but they use it differently. They embraced it. They changed the meaning of it, and I don't think they even, you know, adhered to it, but uh, it was like, yeah, once they take certain words, they're going to go after every Everything, word. And yep. then you saw that. You saw that just mm-hmm. over the years. Like, yeah, no, nothing. You can't say he or she without getting in trouble, man. Yeah, you can't. Mm-hmm. Uh, we watched a video, too. I'm like, yeah, what was uh, offensive, like, uh, uh, in colleges, in certain colleges, oh, right. I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but some of the stuff was just crazy. Like asking um, an Asian person or something like where their family originated from was racist. Like it was like what? Like that's that's not like I I don't get it. I don't get it. And now you can't say midget and and all sorts of stuff. You can't say anything anymore. So you know what I'm gonna do when someone interviews me for the job and they're like, okay, so what's your desired salary? I'm gonna be like, that's racist. <laughs> right? I want you more. Just me what I want, but don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> Pull the race card on everything, VV. Listen, we can throw around and say the Me Too movement. If anything, I'm trying to figure out who touched me or who said hi to me when I was young so I can get some money. Or why <laughs> didn't they? Why didn't they? If they didn't, you get up in their face and you say, why didn't you? I, I, I need that money right now. Like, fuck. People are in their nursing home, 76 years old, talking about something that happened when they're 12. I need to figure out who the hell said hi to me when I was two so I can get my money. Nobody uh, fingered me in the woods. <laughs> I tried to pick somebody for you. Sylvester Stallone, he's, oh, he's done some shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or, uh, yeah, too bad we're too late to that uh, Harvey Weinstein. Yeah, right. oh, okay. Shit. He... Did Matt Locke say hi to me in 1995? That's what I need to know. <laughs> I can get my money. I met, I did meet, uh, 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 who's that guy? Who's the guy that had the late night show? Uh, not Leno, the David other guy. Letterman? Letterman. I met Letterman and in the Taco Bell and he shook my hand. Ooh. Maybe I could say he squeezed a little hard. And yeah, I think so. It kind of hurts. I think he, he did the Michael Jackson rub underneath oh, the... Oh, man. Like, yeah. he, he, <laughs> maybe he twiddled my palm. <laughs> I'm literally waiting for South Park for their parody on this. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard Dave even come under attack lately. People are complaining about, about the South Park. They're all bent out of shape. Like when you're complaining about South Park, I don't know. I don't know. We're done as a society. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, goddamn, Vivi, uh, what do you do? What do you do for fun? 
Um, well, besides make people laugh, I like to do nerdy stuff, play video games, um, do gardening, work out, and cook. So it's like I'm half domesticated, half nerdy. Ah, uh, but you're still doing what you want to do. What do what, what you game on? What you get your game on? Like violent stuff. Um, like Attack on Titan games. Um, what's the one that I did? Darkness. Uh, Assassin's an old Creed. One. I love the Assassin's, Assassin's Creed. Creed. Yeah. yeah. God, God of War is one of my favorites. God of War is, yeah. What do you, what uh, console? I have an Xbox and also a PS. Three or two, I forgot. Ooh, it it's probably. It's the way I think you guys shift it open. I I just got the PS4. It's like it's it's life changing. It's so good, so good. I need to get back on Sims though. That's like something I've been thinking about for years. But I feel like if I get back on Sims, I'm never gonna come out. That's the way I felt. Like yeah, I never rocked out with the Sims because I feel like that's gonna consume me, and that's gonna be my real life. I don't know. Like, yo, I used to have fun. Like, people, like they used to be, like, so poppers. People used to fight. I used to attention to, like, I didn't want the house and set it on fire. Like, <laughs> good time, good time. Like, when I had control of my life. Can you, can you kill your sim husband or wife or whatever floats yep, your boat? I had a whole small popper. What's that? I had a whole small popper um, going on where it's, like, the Mortimore family <laughs> got him to marry like a poor person and then like made him marry like someone's grandma and then like they like got into depression and they got into like low income housing and we burnt that down and then I used the cheat code. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be on some craziness. <laughs> I never rocked. Did you ever rock The Sims? Uh, I did when I was younger, a little bit. And it was the same thing. You were just trying to cause problems. Like, you wanted the house to catch on fire, like Vivi said. Oh like, God. that's all you want to do in that game. My like, you're not succeeding did. unless somebody dies. <laughs> what were you saying, Slime? My sister was obsessed with that game. Obsessed like, with The Sims? But she made the most boring characters, the oh. most boring family. She, like, made a happy family. Yeah. But then they would always, like, die from stupid shit, like they'd electrocute themselves. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking house would burn down spontaneously. <laughs> so either way, the house is burning. <laughs> I've learned the house well, is burning. Have you ever had like a sim die? Like you go to the bathroom or you go out and then come to find out the baby died out of something or like you left it on and it went on that flash forward thing? I left it in dry ice. I thought it was going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> Then I would leave. This is like back in the day. I would leave like my um, PC on and just go about my day and then forget like to save it and then come to find out someone died. And I'm just like, oh my God, I can't restart it. Oh, do you have to have like a funeral? Huh? <laughs> do they have like Sims funerals? They show them like going to heaven or something. Like, <laughs> oh, wait, yeah. The, yeah, <laughs> the, the ghost. See, you, I, you just gotta make another one. <laughs> I had Gigapets. I had a little Yoda Gigapet. Ah, That's what I had. I have one of those. Yeah. All right. Some Tamagotchis. We can all connect off the Tamagotchis. <laughs> Vivi, I, I, the one video I watched um, of your show looked like you were drinking. What do you uh, What do you drink during your show? Well, a majority of times I drink, like, water and now for, like, collaborations. I like to be a little bit alert, so it varies. I can be drinking tea or um, apple juice or, like, a mixed drink with rum. Oh, okay. See, whatever show episode I watched, it looked like an alcohol beverage you were drinking because I saw a bottle in the background, and then uh, you and the other person you were interviewed definitely both had like a glass of. Uh, it could have been apple juice. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> apple, apple juice. Apple juice. That was like, uh, like a, a mimosa. Okay. Like some champagne and some orange juice, Tropicana. Nice. Yes, but I definitely turned the bottle on the back because they're not sponsoring me. So I was just like, oh, no, I'm not going to give you that money. So you just turn it around. <laughs> yeah, you ain't giving me that money. You ain't getting your, 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 your beer show and your, your liquor. You're not giving me the Rob and Flynn money, so no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Rob yeah. was making fun of me earlier because I spent 20 minutes mixing a cocktail for Slambo because uh, I'm very particular with my cocktails. You know, I got the, the mixing glass and the stirring spoon and, like you know, he, everything. He's, so he's <laughs> shredding <laughs> citrus. <laughs> Shredding citrus <laughs> peels. It's 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 riveting, Vivi. <laughs> Vivi, uh, thank you so much for talking to us. It's been a blast. Uh, where can everybody find you in your show? You can find me on um, podcast. I'm um, not podcast. Excuse me. Buzzsprout, Spotify, iTunes, and all the sites that um, hold podcasts. 
Now, if you don't have time to listen to it, you can definitely watch me on YouTube at Not Perfect Just Broke. What if you're a simp? How can they find you? My, my simp is not here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thanks. Thanks for talking to us, Vivi. All right, no problem. Bye. Have a good one. Have a good one. one.